Psalm 112 said something amazing that it said, praise ye the Lord and blesses the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Then it says that wealth and riches shall be in his house in verse three. The amazing thing about verse three is that we see a wealth and riches anointed. It's a glory from God. It's wealth and riches. These are two brackets of financial explosions. These are two brackets of financial manifestation. And if we look at both of these, it's telling you that it shall be in your house. I mean that you will be the possessor of it. This will be your result. This will be your condition. You have to look at today. What is the current state of your house? What's going on inside of your house? Do you have a do you have a condition right now in your life where there's scarcity or you don't have the things that you dream about? Well, saints, what the Father is revealing to us through the word of God is that this is the story that he has prepared for you. Not the story that your flesh shows you, but this is the story that he has for you. If you stick to be in spirit. Wealth and riches. Is the beautiful will of God. To those that choose the straight and narrow path. Wealth and riches. The reason why God has prepared wealth and riches. Because it empowers you. To not be defeated. In worldly affairs, worldly affairs. See, you live in the world. You, you're in a worldly affair. You can't run from it. Government, all that. These are worldly affairs. You can't run from it. Paying taxes on houses, paying taxes on your car, doing your car registration. All these are worldly affairs. You get it? These are worldly affairs. So you can't run from it. Remember what, uh, Peter asked Jesus. He said, uh, uh, Remember, they was asking Jesus about uh, how you going to pay these taxes, uh, Peter. I go, and remember what Jesus told Peter. He said, go in the fish mouth and they go with the supernatural money. That was to pay off Peter's taxes. I want some of y'all to let that sink in. Jesus so strapped and loaded in his kingdom that he gave Peter money to pay off worldly people. Because see, wealth and riches is there to protect you even from worldly affairs. You must start thinking about the wealth and riches that God is going to bring forth visibly to you. You must start thinking about it. Start patterning it, patterning it in your mentality, in your meditation. See, saints, when I was broke, I was thinking about multimillionaire status. I knew I was a multimillionaire. And that's why I even started sewing different because I, I got kind of offended. I'm like, I ain't going to see nobody, let nobody see me sewing no $50 seed. I'm a multimillionaire. And I started sewing like that. <laughs> So saints, even um, the sowing anointing also give you a sowing pride. No, I know this personally. And the, the pride is divine because you start recognizing, no, I'm sowing out of who I am. Not, of, not out of what I think is going to happen bad against me. I'm sowing out of who I am. So there was a time in my life, I started saying, nah, nah, forget these $50 seeds. I want to sow in the hundreds. They don't like, forget that. I want to sow in the thousands. 
because I was no longer operating from the image of the condition, but the image of God. See, you can't operate from the image of the condition. You got to operate from the image of God. The image of the condition will make you miss. But the image of God will keep you in faith. Faith is a creator. Faith creates things. Faith moves things. Demons fear faith. That's the whole reason why demons work to establish fear in you because faith terrorizes evil spirits. Now, saints, here's the big deception that a lot of times you may think that you're operating by faith and you're operating by fear because faith will make you put your foot on the water. But see, fear will have you uh, thinking that you operate by faith, but you only going to pick your toes out on the water and check the temperature. And then you pick your toes back in the boat. And then Satan will trick you, be like, you, you operate in faith and you're not. When you operate in faith, you pick your whole foot on the water and you trust that the power of God would defy natural gravity. Meaning things that are commonly happening for other people is not going to happen to you because you have put your trust in the living God. See, when, when you really operate in faith, you place a demand on Jesus. Now, in uh, Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5, I think that's 1 Corinthians probably. Chapter two, verse five, it said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Do you really know what that means? Having faith in the power of God means that you don't believe that the power of Satan could defeat you. You believe that the power of God will guide you, will protect you, will bring you to victory and show you the decisions that you're supposed to make. So when you say that your faith should stand in the power of God, that means that I believe in his protective nature, his provisional nature, and his prosperity nature. That means I'm going to be successful. If you believe in King Jesus' prosperity nature, you know that you're going to have good success. Remember what he told Joshua. He told him to meditate on the word and speak the word. And do the word. He told him three brackets. Think. Speak. Do. And he said that y'all make your way prosper. See some of y'all you missing some of the steps. Because you may think. You may do. But you don't speak. See saints the reason why. The Lord worked through money cometh. Is because it allows your tongue. To exercise. It's God. It's Godhood. Money cometh, let your tongue exercise its Godhood. So now you, 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 now you could start operating in the threefold core. Think, speak, do. Think, speak, do. Or think, do, speak. That's a threefold core that's not easily broken. And see, when you think, speak, and do, the natural world has to bow. To the God in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know what I mean? The expectation of glory. In Colossians, Apostle Paul said, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Apostle Paul was talking about Christ being in you. And when Christ is in you, you'll have the hope of glory, which is the expectation. That's what hope means. To expect, to look forward to, to imagine, to look, to receive the glory which is the manifestation of God's personality, his nature, his characteristic. So Apostle Paul revealed the secret apostolically that when Christ is in you, you could have a picture in your mind and you could look forward to the glory all the time. Now, the mightiness of that is this. If you can always expect the glory that means that you always can expect wealth. You always can expect riches. 
you always can expect that cancellation. You always can expect God sending the supernatural to deal with natural problems. In the book of Acts, when the apostles went through natural problems, God sent supernatural help. He is the God of debt cancellation. The Lord is the God of supernatural money. He's the God of financial favor that don't make any natural sense. And when you honor God, he will cause his power to work for you in the earth to bring things into your direction that according to your natural strength, your natural education and your natural smarts, it will never happen. 